Okay, this is my um, pulse width modulation circuit for driving an LED strip that I got from uh, well, Deal Extreme for about ten bucks. Um, this scope is showing the, the the duty cycle of the pulse width, pulse width mod modulation. Sorry, <laughs> and this uh, multimeter is showing the the average current flowing through the the LED strip, which I think has a limit supposedly of around two hundred and fifty milliamps. Um, I've no idea what that beep was, but never mind. So we start off, um, we turn the thing off and on. Uh, there we go, and we turn this dial here to increase the brightness. And you can see this is the step, the minimum step there. And as it gets bright, it's going to it's going to swamp the camera. So I'm going to put a piece of paper over the top to uh, control that. As we can see at the moment, we're very very low on the scale of pulse width of the the duty cycle, probably around I don't know, 15 or something out of a of a 1024 or 10 bit. Um, duty. So as we scroll up there, we can see the duty cycle is increasing, and you can see there's a lot. The change in intensity is quite uh, sort of uh, notable compared to the change in duty cycle. And as you go up higher, I mean we're still only running at 50 milliamps. It's getting quite bright. And as we go up to 100 milliamps, um, probably now about one third duty cycle. Uh, it's got to the stage where it's now kind of just bright. You can see a slight increase, but once we get up to here, no, it's not getting any brighter. Oh, my uh, uh, scope just decided to go to sleep. There we go. So we're running at 210 milliamps, which is I've artificially limited it to that so that we don't overload the the LED strip. Uh, the two LEDs here indicating at the moment that we've reached the top of our range. Now we can go back down again and see the green one indicating down, and the red one indicating up. Maybe I should have done that the other way around, who knows. Uh, so there you go. Uh, if we turn the device off and we turn it back on again, it reads the last uh, value that it had in memory and uh, reloads it. So we can kind of find our favorite values there. Every tenth of a second or so it's checking to see if the values have changed and if it has it stores it in the EEPROM. And so when we turn the device off, turn it back on, it comes back to where we were, which is kind of handy because you can leave it sort of very low. Now at the moment the push button of the rotary encoder is just uh, actually resetting the pick and what I probably do when I get around to it is make that so you can store some favourites. So maybe you could have a you know, really low level store that and then or maybe you'd hold it down to store it like that and then a really high level up here somewhere hold it down to store that and then maybe you could flick between levels by doing a single press but as I said, haven't actually done that yet, that's just an idea. So there we go. Uh, right up the top there, about 80%, 70, 70-80% duty cycle giving us 200 milliamp and giving us good control, fairly linear control and about two and a half, no sorry, about three and a half turns from full on to full off. And reasonably good control down there at the low end, although there is a notable step there between off and step one. And that's with the, uh, the hardware pulse width modulation running as fast as it can on an 8 megahertz clock so there's not an awful lot I can do about that. There you go, all done.